It's winter time, so you know everybody's got like that half sickness where you don't have the willpower to like not control. Like, like I'm just gonna be sick, you know. Like, it's, that's what it is here. You're just sick until summertime. Because I don't have the willpower to not hang out, you know. I'm just be like, I'll just be sniffly for like a few months. I just get to that point, I'm like, I just need somebody who's really sick to spit in my mouth. And let's just get on with it. Let's go. Like, let's, let's gestate. Let's go. So I tried to take care of it. I called my doctor, which, I, like, I have insurance, but I have the kind of insurance that I deserve. <laughs> I, have in, I have insurance through work. And this is work. So I have the kind of health care you would expect. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Kyle? I make pretend. Okay. Well, you got a hundred-year-old guy that works out of a strip mall in Koreatown who holds his head up to your bare chest instead of using a stethoscope. That's who you get. <laughs> it feels holistic. I like it. <laughs> So I called them up. I'm like, ah, I want to come in. I'm feeling sick. They're like, we can get you in at the end of May. I'm like, I'll probably just die. <laughs> so I went to urgent care and, whoa. Oh, I don't know if anybody's been to urgent care recently, um, but let me tell you about urgent care. It's neither of those things. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Urgent care is a building filled with people in no particular hurry to not give a shit about how you feel. <laughs> That's what urgent care was. <laughs> There's no doctors. There's no doctors at urgent care. You'd think there'd be doctors. It looks like there'd be doctors. They got the whole hospital shtick going on. They use a little cross and urgent and care and people are wearing scrubs and everything, but it's just an imposter hospital. And then you realize everybody wearing scrubs are just parolees trying their best. It's a lot of exposed tattoos making not very educated guesses about your well-being. And I didn't know that at first, so I trusted it like a hospital. I got in there, and they gave me a clipboard with paperwork to fill out, and I did. I put real numbers on there, real numbers. <laughs> Social Security, you got it. Yeah, there's probably a doctor in here, and they wouldn't do anything bad, so here you go. What else do you need? Giving them all my numbers. And then I gave that to a lady at the counter, and she had, like, tattoos, but whatever. We, we all have them at this point, you know? Like, I have all my dumb shit. My tattoo, I just look at my tattoos and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Every one of my tattoos should just say, don't worry, buddy, the next one's gonna be cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't fault anybody. <laughs> well, all right, you're at the first stage of this interaction. Sure, you got some tattoos there, all right. And then I get called in to the, to the next thing. I get into the next part of the building and get into a room. And, uh, and, and the, the, a guy comes in there, and he's got scrubs on. They all have different color scrubs. Like, that, hmm, you should get them all from one place. <laughs> it's not like working in a funky restaurant. Like, we try to do a dark-colored top and lighter pants, but make it your own. Like, no, have, have a uniform. You're in healthcare. Have a uniform. That guy's just wearing a blue T-shirt. That's not even... That's absorbent. You don't want that. <laughs> Were they airborne things? So the first guy comes in, and, uh, and he's got knuckle tattoos, which is like, all right, hey, man, good on you. Look at you. Look at you. Getting your shit together. Good for you. You're in here. You're probably taking some correspondence courses, and you're going to get custody of your daughter again. I could tell. I could tell. You're on the right track. You're, doing the, you're making the right choices and good for you. So he took my blood pressure and then we do, both took turns guessing as to whatever that means. <laughs> I 
I love how they'll take your blood pressure and then tell it to you and then sit there like you know what that means. <laughs> what is it? It's tuna over orange. All right, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Is that what I should be eating more of or is that the blood pressure itself? Either way, what is it? Cut out carbs? Start, bar, eat more carbs? So both, he took it and we both looked at the thing and we're just like, whatever. <laughs> Like, is that good? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm asking him questions about it. Like, was it? And I'm like, I'm sorry, man. That's not like that's the next stage. I'm like, I'll just ask the doctor. I'll, I'll ask the doctor that. And he wouldn't deny the fact that <laughs> I'm thinking a doctor's coming up. He would accept my statement and return it to me, but with different language. That's very manipulative. <laughs> So I'm like, I'll just wait and I'll ask the doctor. And he, he would just say, absolutely, the provider will be with you soon. I'm like, that's not, that's not an accredited profession, a provider? What's a provider? What's this fucking weird blurry term you're throwing back at me? Say doctor. Why can't you say doctor? Is this like a legal thing? Like you got to call it a water pipe instead of a bong? What's going on? Say doctor. And also, like, he could have said, like, the professionals, but the provider? The provider. The provider will be... This is in L.A. I know Scientology's around there. Who'd I just give my social security number to? And now I'm waiting to meet the provider? Like, I'm some frontier housewife shivering in a cabin? Like, oh, when will the provider show up? I'm so cold and hungry. And some shirtless strapping lad with a mustacheless beard kicks in the door with a bucket of goat's milk and, dry, and loaves of bread. Oh, thank God Jebediah the provider's here. We're gonna make it through the winter. So, and he's like, yeah, the provider will be here soon. And then he left. I was like, oh. And then the next guy showed up. Presumably the provider. <laughs> he comes in, he's got a neck tattoo, and I'm like, well, at least we're making up our way up the gang. At least, at least this guy's gotta be a lieutenant or something. This guy's, because at this point, I think I just walked into a heist. I'm like, I think, this is just a street gang. It's like, listen, we're gonna rob the urgent care. You can't rob a hospital, they got security there, but urgent care, there's nobody, there's not even doctors in that place. We'll go in there, we'll steal all the pills, we'll sell them at street value, we'll make a killing. And then I just interrupted the whole operation rolling in there one after, like, I have the sniffles. And they're like, everybody play along. He's too dumb to notice that we're not real medical professionals. So I got everybody fumbling through shit, like blood pressure. You got it, buddy. And I'm like, Haha, who knows, right? This guy gave us his social security number? Bonus, gonna steal his identity on top of getting all these oxys out of here. So he comes in with a level of nonchalance that I didn't appreciate. Like he just came in and just leaned on the counter right away. Like like trying to look cool, but like he like he like, he was surprised by stuff that was in there. You know, he's, he's like, oh shit, we got cotton balls? Yeah, man, you work here. <laughs> and he's got my clipboard with all the stuff I wrote down. And I'm telling him, I'm like, yeah, I kind of get this thing. I'm just not sick all the way, but I want to get something to knock it out. And he's like, I get it, bro. I'm like, I don't think you do. <laughs> I don't think bro's the type of bedside manner that you're taught in med school. But he's looking through the stuff that I wrote down. I filled it all out honestly, you know, because I just want to get the right treatment. It's like, how, much, how many drinks do you have a week? Too many, whatever. And, you know, do you use any recreational drugs? And I was like, I wrote, I wrote marijuana. That's what I wrote. I wrote marijuana. And he's looking at that section. He goes, all right, I see you getting into that weed. I'm like... You should say marijuana. Because I wrote marijuana, and you should say marijuana because you're a professional. I would have written cannabis, but nobody knows how to spell that. 
you put the two ends in there, and you're like, is it two Bs, two? And then you gotta scratch that out. And like, no, they're not gonna take me seriously. <laughs> they're gonna think I'm just in here for painkillers. So I'm scratching out crossword puzzle answers. <laughs> but don't go into your lingo for marijuana. I'm like, All right, so I see you get into that killer doge. Like, no, man. <laughs> Say marijuana. Those are the words you use. And then we're just hanging out. There's no exchange. He's just looking at the paper, and I, was, I had to prompt it. I was like, what do you think we should do? <laughs> and he just kind of like, he's like, man, I could sell you a Z-Pack. I was like, say prescribe. <laughs> Those are your words that you use. You say prescribe. I could sell you a Z-Pack? Like, he just found a backpack full of them in the alley. I'm like, oh, make some quick cash on the job today. Got a side hustle going on. Selling Z-Packs, 15 bucks a pop. I didn't know what they do. I got two of them. Anything with a cool name, I'm into it. Z-Pack, it sounds powerful. It sounds like an edgier boy band. I'll be into it. Anything that sounds like it could be a cool band. Like, anytime I hear J.D. Power and Associates, I'm like, man! What is this ZZ Top cover band doing giving out all these awards to car companies? <laughs> Tell me some smoky-voiced guy at a dark nightclub, I'm J.D. Power. These are the Associates. Hit it, boys. That's way better than whatever bullshit they're doing with these dumb awards for cars. 